Mass for You at Home is proudly supported by Catholic Mission. Be the difference in someone's life today. Phone 1800 257 296 or visit catholicmission.org.au. and welcome to the celebration of the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah the prophet went off to Sidon, and when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, Please bring a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called after her. Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, she replied, I have no baked bread but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first make a little scone of it for me and bring it to me and then make some for yourself and for your son. For thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel. The jar of meal shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be emptied, before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food she himself and her son. The jar of meal was not spent, nor the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul. It's the Lord who preserves Spring. 
From the letter to the Hebrews. It is not as though Christ had entered a man made sanctuary, which was only modeled on the real one, but it was heaven itself, so that he could appear in the actual presence of God on our behalf. And he does not have to offer himself again and again, like the high priest going into the sanctuary year after year with the blood that is not his own, or else he would have to suffer over and over again since the world began. Instead of that, he has made his appearance once and for all, now at the end of the last age, to do away with sin by sacrificing himself. Since men only die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, too, offers himself only once to take the faults of many on himself. And when he appears a second time, it is not to deal with sin, but to reward with salvation those who are waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Happy the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the treasury. And many of the rich put in a great deal. A poor widow came and put in two small coins, the equivalent of a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, I tell you solemnly, this poor widow has put more in than all who have contributed to the treasury, for they have all put in money they had over, but she, from the little she had, has put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Two anonymous women teach us a great lesson today. Both were widows and had no one to take care of them. In the ancient world, widows were in dire straits. Mind you, there was no Centrelink back then. The first woman gave Elijah a scone made from a handful of flour. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but in fact, she spent all that she had to feed a stranger. The drought was severe, the pantry was empty, death was imminent. The other woman did a similar thing. She put into a treasury two coins, everything she possessed. The faith of these two widows challenges our faith. There is often some part of our lives which we do not want to give to God there is nearly always something we hold back. We rarely make the final sacrifice and the final surrender. To justify our half-heartedness, we have some good excuses up our sleeve. I go to church, I say my prayers, I am a priest who has already sacrificed enough by taking the vow of celibacy. Or we may say, I'm in dire straits, I am poor, I'm sick, I'm in prison. What is your excuse? It looks like the disciples also struggled to trust God with their own lives. Otherwise, why would Jesus ask them to come 
and learn faith by watching a widow putting a few bob in a collection box. The message here is timeless. What God wants is our whole heart, our full commitment, and our complete trust. Perhaps we feel like saying to Jesus right now, I'm not like these two widows. I hold back. I'm scared to fully trust in you and be guided by your gospel. An honest prayer like that would be a good start. After all, the widow from Sidon had also reasoned with Elijah about her situation before she eventually made a leap of faith. Had she trusted her own strength and ability, she would have died of starvation. She survived because she staked her all on God. Letting God be in control of our lives is a scary thing. Something in us tells us that we might end up worse off, unhappy or over-religious. In reality, Our Heavenly Father wants to support us in a time of hardship and always sustain us with his love. Jesus yearns for us to understand how much God cares about us. Frankly, only to such a God we can give our heart, our trust, and our life. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It is the Lord who raises up the lowly. Let us bring our needs before the God of the widow and orphan that the church will be characterized by humility and authenticity in responding to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick, including those with COVID-19, will receive comfort and strength from those around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19, may God console them and grant them peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you provide for those who respond to you in faith. Hear our prayers, which we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. To give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning, and your truth in the watches of the night. Lord, it is good to The just will flourish like the palm tree And grow like a Lebanon cedar Planted in the house of the Lord They will flourish in the courts of our God Lord, it is good
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Oh. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Brian our Bishop, the clergy, and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be here. Take and eat, take and eat, this is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink, this is my blood given up for you. Stuck out 
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the mess is ended. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Brian Mascord. I invite you to consider, if you are able to, to provide financial assistance to help extend the 50-year legacy of Mass for You at Home.